exactly a year ago, we started the process of bringing transactional gold and silver to the Texas legislature. We had great progress, but we fell short by hours. It felt like it was dead as an idea. But then other states took notice. I wrote a book, Pirate Money. We started getting calls. We held a summit at Liberty Hawk Ranch with at least a dozen states attending. We had our plan B in place. And Utah State Representative Ken Ivory, he showed up. He ate most of our ice cream, but he asked a ton of questions. He saw a technology demo from Glenn, and he looked through the Constitution and history. He went back to Utah and pulled together a team of experts to examine, vet, and even challenge the idea. I traveled with colleagues to Salt Lake and was impressed with how serious he is. Now we've invited Representative Ivory, once dubbed the most dangerous conservative in state legislatures, back into the economic war room, we've had him here before, to discuss the concept of gold and silver as money, as well as his recently filed HB 348. And in addition to Ken, we also invited another conservative hero, Utah State Treasurer Marlo Oaks. This is a man who has led the fight against woke, against ESG, and most recently, NAC, natural asset companies. It sounds like an alphabet soup of meaningless letters, but really, these letters are a threat to our liberty, and Treasurer Oaks is a real leader in the State Financial Officers Foundation with Derek Kreifels, and we cover him a lot in the Economic War Room. So I want to welcome uh, Ken and Marlo to the Economic War Room. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Good to be back with you always. You know, Utah is a real leader in sound money, has been for, for a long time. Can you share just a little bit of the history of Utah and sound money? Well, yeah. I mean, as you know, back in 2011, we, we led the charge with the Utah Legal Tender Act. And a dear friend of mine, uh, it was originally my bill. And then uh, I had some other things going on. Brad Galvez, uh, bless his heart, carried that to the finish line. And, and um you know, we got that bill passed, and 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 really the 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 story and the objective remains the same, Kevin. We've got a federal government that has its hand in the cookie jar, but only this time that cookie jar is our earnings, our savings, our property that is embodied in our money. And it used to be that money was a, a fixed standard, represented that, and now they're just printing the value out from under us, and and you know we're not going to stand for that for us and our people and. You know, bless Marla Oaks. He's been a great champion, as you mentioned. And so we're moving forward to have transactional, functional gold and silver in Utah to protect the purchasing power of the earnings and savings of people of Utah. Yeah. Now, you've got the gold backs that have been around for a while, but you've got this new HB 348 that appears to go for further than that. What are the key components of HB 348? Yeah, so Kevin, there are four key components. Number one is the is the functional transactional uh, ability for gold and silver that that preserves Utahns from being devalued, debanked, and demonetized. Uh, the second part is the ability to pay taxes in gold, and why that's important is that that advances the argument that gold is money and not an asset subject to capital gains. Uh, the third thing that we do is we allow for our good treasurer there to invest some of our rainy day fund into precious metals, gold and silver, like all the all the central banks of the world are doing at breakneck pace now. And then the fourth thing is we allow for the state to issue bonds denominated in gold. I mean, imagine if you could buy a 30 year municipal bond investment, one's denominated in dollars, the other one's denominated in gold. Pretty easy answer which one you would choose, which could really substantially lower the cost of our debt. And so those are the four key components of the bill.